Joey All right. Mother, hey, hey, hey. You motherfuckers say. <laughs> this video is for anybody who wants to lose weight, but you feel like you quit on yourself before you even start. So in this video, we want to talk about the one thing that you have to do that is inescapable, no matter who you are, no matter where you grew up, no matter what your past history has been, no matter what your weight loss or body transformation goal is, you need to do this one thing if you want to be successful in losing weight sustainably. We're not talking about lose weight to gain it back. We're talking about lose weight, keep it off forever. There's one major thing, and we're probably going to give you some bonus things. But this is going to be a crucial video or podcast episode for you to listen to. We are feeling extra passionate today. Extra. That one thing. Don't give it away. Oh, okay. Don't just blah. You got to build it up. You got to be like, why do I want to know this one thing? What's, <clears throat> what are the benefits of this one thing? How about you talk about that? And let's take a little scoochie back. Let's take a little scoochie back. So I, can I begin with a statement? Sure. So one of our mentors says this, and I couldn't agree more. Wherever you go, there you are. And this applies to not just weight loss, by the way. It applies to anything. And let me tell you something. If you have a significant amount of weight to lose, some of you guys might not like me for this. And some of you guys might not like us after today's video. You might shut this video off. And like that is seconds. okay because we're feeling really passionate and we want to shake people through the screen. I'm going to tell who this video is for. If you find yourself being really upset with us, ask yourself why. So we're going to, we are going to like stage this so that you understand that, look, we are not here to blow smoke up your ass. We are not here to sugarcoat what shouldn't be sugarcoated. Some like pepperoni is good on pizza. Pepperoni is not good on a fucking ice cream cone. Okay. So we are here to not put sugar where sugar doesn't belong. All right. So we, and, and, and the, the purpose for our passion comes from, we want you to succeed so bad that sometimes we're just like, because you do not see it yet. You, you just, you can't see. You can't see what you can see. I got to turn this down because I have a feeling we're going to freaking blow the speaker out of this thing. So the, the person, hold on. If you, if you find yourself getting upset with this or wanting to turn this video off or, or you're mad or whatever, you have to ask yourself if it's because what we're saying is the truth and you're not ready to hear it yet. If that's the case, that's, that's okay. We accept your... Um, we accept your anger towards us. It's fine. Uh, we will accept responsibility for every word that comes out of our mouths. Um, and if you are feeling particularly attacked from it, then it's probably because it's speaking right to you. But also know hundreds, if not thousands of people are going to be watching this video. So it is just an overarching theme that we see in why people who are trying to lose weight continue to fail and how we refuse that if you come into our ecosystem, we are going to just allow you to quit on yourself. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Not here. Not in this house. No, we feel so passionate because we want you to win. And when you do not see how you are literally blocking yourself from that, you're a victim, you're a victim, and victims cannot rise. And we are- They're hostage. Right, because you're, you're held hostage- By yourself. To beliefs that are not even the truth, right? So hopefully with this message, maybe we will, our intention is to offer you a shift in perspective. Right? To because some truth into because you. if you will start to see what we see and what you can see, then maybe you will start operating a little bit differently. If this if this applies to you. And okay? hopefully, and hopefully you're able to see the perspective so that you can say, huh, even if that doesn't feel good in this moment, it's because I know that I've been falling short on myself. And that doesn't feel good to anybody. Yeah. So some of the um, 
the the ways that we come about, you know, getting so passionate about this one thing that we're going to talk about is when you learn to, when you have this thing, you can literally achieve anything. And it's obviously not easy to come by. Otherwise, everybody would have the life of their dreams. Um, But this is one of the things that we continue to find being one of the things that hold people back. So our, our mission in this video is to help you to see where you could potentially be in your own way and the only way to get out of it. So if you are really serious about getting your body into shape because you want to feel great about yourself, you want to be healthier, you want to be more energized, you want to be able to, you know, go out and do the physical things that you really enjoy doing, but you feel like you can't do right now or play with your kids so that they know that you love them and you want to spend time with them and you don't have to tell them you're tired all the time uh, because you're sitting on the couch because you have no energy. Okay. Let's tell them what, let's tell them what the thing is. Yeah. I will tell you before that. I also want you to know If there is a common denominator between all of our most successful clients, Mm -hmm. it's this one thing. Yes. Now, do not compare yourself to other people, but you got to learn from people who are winning. So, And we want you to freaking win. You can compare yourself. That's fine. But if you're comparing yourself, don't make it a destructive type. Right. Right. Don't say, oh, they are there, so I should be there, too. Or they've accomplished this, so I should accomplish this. No, the comparison is to say, wow, they've accomplished that, so can I. I'm not there yet, but yeah. I could be. Yeah. That's amazing. Great. Yeah. Yay. So inspirational. Yeah. Um, so this thing that we're going to talk about is actually one of our companies and our personal core values. I, I don't I'm actually. I'm our, company's our company's core <laughs> values are our core values. Exactly. So... Um, this one thing is accountability and I'll be very transparent. So, you know, there are people often who will, eh, I guess I wouldn't say often compared to the number of people that sign up for the things that we do. There's a a small handful of people who we get, we feel for so much because they want to quit before they start. And usually this comes in the form of wanting to back out of some kind of program or hiding from their coach or uh, what are some of the other ways they quit before they start? Their language, you know, saying like, or they just don't even enroll in the program um, and, and what that says to themselves too. If they have the ability to enroll in a program and they want to, they say they want to, but they choose not to, they are literally setting themselves up to fail because in their mind they're saying I don't want to sign up for this program because if I fail I will waste money but really what they're saying is I plan to fail so I'm not going to invest I'm not going to commit I'm not going to be accountable to anything but what happens when you put money forward when you put money forward to do anything doesn't matter if it's a if it's a you know um a real estate investment you you're want- you're committing you are accountable to that investment you just made if you sign up for if you sign up for a personal trainer if you get a coach if you do one of our programs you are saying i am being accountable right now to this investment that i made and i'm going to follow through with it and you know when people want to quit essentially before they start it's because they've got no accountability they won't accept it and we hold people to the fire we hold people to the fire when they sign up for something or uh, when they, you know, refuse to communicate with their coach or whatever the situation is, they're like, oh, please give me an easy way out. And we're like, no, no. Because that's your problem. You've been giving yourself an easy way out all along. And the, pr- and the other problem, which we just talked about, like right before we started this, the other problem is we're now starting to live in a society that promotes you having an easy way out. The government giving people money. Now, granted, there are some situations where like people desperately need help. That is completely different from this, um, where, you know, somebody is in really desperate need of something and you're coming to their aid and you're helping them better their situation. It's different though, if you are making some kind of excuse for why you can't do something when you've told yourself that you are going to do something. So let's say a workout, for example, 
you say you're going to go do a workout and then you make some kind of reason why you can't like, oh, I'm tired or I worked later at work. So then I didn't have time as if like you can't go outside and do something at any point in time, even if it's pouring down rain, um, you know, or like, oh, it's cold outside. It's so cold. I think I'm just going I, to stay in or, you know, my kid got sick. I'd be like, dude, lay him down on a, on a blanket somewhere and like do some squats. You know, there, and if you want it bad enough, you find a way to make it happen. The problem is that we th make excuses that we often justify as a legitimate reason when it's not a legitimate reason because we don't want to be accountable. But this is the problem. Our lack of accountability to ourselves is also, get this, a lack of the way that you show up to the people that you love. Because when you don't hold yourself accountable or you don't allow somebody else who you've raised your hand, this is why I brought up the when people sign up for our programs, is because you've raised your hand, you've made a trade for somebody else to hold you accountable and now you're trying to back out of it and say, no, don't hold me accountable. I'm like, bullshit, you said hold me accountable. I'm holding you accountable. You better believe that. Now there are instances where there is a legitimate something happen like you know you freaking um uh we have a, a good friend amber lee uh who got freaking you know busted by an suv on her motorcycle okay cool Listen, there's here, a legitimate reason why she's not going to go work out or here's, have to pivot or here, something. here's the thing we love people and we are very compassionate. Love people, hate their excuses. In, in the case, in the case like Amber Lee's situation, like some freak accident that happened that's outside of their control. Now, I will tell you, when people want to back out of things in their lives, okay, 90% of the time, it is not because of a freak accident. 98% of the and time. And here's the thing. Is it any wonder why this, this, this might hurt some people, but I'm just keeping it really real because how you do one thing is how you do everything. Is it any wonder why, you know, oftentimes if somebody's got a hundred pounds of weight to lose, you know, they also have some kind of, you know, like there's financial other, other stuff that they're struggling with or it's either financial or, you know, relationship or something else, something, yeah. probably everything. Now, listen, if you're in this situation and you're like, but, I, but I'm ready to change, freaking fantastic. Let's go. Let's go. We believe in you so much that we are relentless about holding you accountable because you need that shit in order to be successful. The problem is it's not a, a lack of accountability in just your workouts or your nutrition. It's the concept lack of accountability in life yes it's a lack of follow through which is part of accountability is following through with what you say you're going to do i want to read the definition of accountability okay um, the factor condition of being accountable or responsible okay so if we look at responsible then if it's bringing up responsibility um, if you break down the word i love doing this break down the word responsibility into response and ability and if you flip-flop them it is the ability to respond now if you're living your life in reaction mode all the time if you've had a heart attack or you've had a stroke or you've got diabetes or you know you've got a bunch of joint pain and then you're trying to change your life you are reacting to something that you've let happen to you. It's a reaction, not a response. A reaction is something that is like a fight or flight, like desperation move, where a response is a thoughtful, intentional, calculated decision-making process. And if we look at responsibility as part of accountability, right? It's taking responsibility for the decisions that you've made and the commitments that you've said you were gonna make. Um, responsibility is when you don't take responsibility or you don't have accountability you are literally unable to respond you are unable to change the situation so in the beginning of this when sarit said you are what did you say i called it a, a prisoner you said you're 
Mm, mm, mm. You used a different word, but basically it's like, oh, victim. You are, you have no control over anything in your life at that point. If you do not take responsibility, if you do not take accountability, you are out of control. You lack control, which means your life is going to be chaos. So if you feel like your life is chaos, where in your life have you lacked responsibility or accountability? Where in your life have you blamed something or someone else and not taken responsibility for why you are in that situation? Where has it ever been your fault? And where is it other people's fault? Because the, I'll tell you, the more things in your life that you say are somebody else's fault or something else's fault, COVID or your aunt or you know somebody from your childhood or a traumatic experience, this is not to like diminish trauma because we've all got it to some varying degrees. Um, but how long can we blame that situation for where we're at in our lives currently? How long can we blame something else before we finally decide, you know what? Yes, that may have happened and I cannot do anything about it from then, but I can do something about it from now. And I choose to take responsibility and I choose that if I miss my workout, it's because of me. It's not because I got a flat tire. It's not because it's raining outside. It's not because my car broke down. It's not because somebody called me and needed something. It's not because my kid was crying. It's because I let something else come in front of it and this can be okay, but you just have to be honest with yourself in admitting that something else was a higher priority in that moment. And most of the time it's comfort. Most of the time it is comfort. Or it, lack of awareness, right? If you it's leave a your life comfort. in an impulsive way, like, oh my gosh, I need to have this right now because I'm having a craving for it. Or, oh my gosh, it sounds so good. Let me get it. Right? Or, oh like, my God, this is really hard right now. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to do it. I can't do it. Right. Like, you are living your life in a reactionary way, not in a responsive way. Now, if you train yourself to live yourself in a responsive way, when there is you know, like, God forbid, like an accident or, 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 um, or catastrophic situation, you have been responding for so long that now you know how to respond in a calculated way when it comes to a bigger problem rather than react. A reactive person is always con going to continue to react. So unless you're willing to open up your mind and be willing to change, you're going to continue running on that. It's chaos. And you know, like by the end of the day, like the reason why my heart breaks is because, you know, if you're listening to this right now and you're feeling this feeling in your stomach and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm a little upset. Like, I feel like they're calling me out. This hurts my which feelings. I'm, where I'm not talking to you specifically, I'm talking to you. But if it applies to you, we're talking to you. But if it applies to you, then you need to, you need to hear this right now. Now, had you not known this up to now, it's not your fault. And that's why we need to talk about this. Because the problem is, is that we are living in this society where we are now told, oh, relax, don't work too hard. Or, balance. oh, like, yeah, seek balance. Or, oh, like, oh, you know, like, why, why don't you just like take a break? Or, you know, like free money before you even started your job. All work, no play. Now, let me tell you something. It, it all has to do with getting something without earning it, which creates entitlement. Yes. Which makes everything that doesn't happen our way somebody else's fault. Yes. I got, so, go ahead. So here's the deal. The one common trait that all of our most successful clients have is that when an adversity comes, they don't back out, they lean into it. Oh, yes, they run straight through it. You lean into it. It doesn't feel any less comfortable for anybody. It's all going to be uncomfortable. Think about it. Think about it. Who are the three most inspiring people in your life? Just write those names down right now. Three, two, one, go. Okay. Now, 
if you were to like even have a five minute conversation with them and you were to ask them, what have you overcome? You will see is that the people who have achieved more have overcome more. They will find so it easy. So it's not that they answers. had the easier way out. It is not because they were genetic beasts or anything like that. Or special or lucky or... Anything. It is simply because they continued to persevere when shit was hard. And right now we live at a time where, you know, like we live in a time where there is a separator that in the sense that if you're willing to take extreme ownership and accountability and responsibility for your life, you're actually separating yourself from the pack because what society is doing right now in, in a way that is, you know, just more prominent than ever is they're lowering lack of accountability. They're, they're lowering, ma- hold on. Sorry, they're, they're low, they're, they're lowering. Their level of accountability is decreasing. Yes. And it's becoming more and more acceptable. And if you're smart, you would ask yourself, ooh, I wonder why that's happening. It's because there is manipulation from the top. I think it's So maybe if you happen to be that person who has 50 or 100 pounds to lose, but you're like, you know what? Nobody told me this before. And if this is you, just go ahead and drop it in the comments. Would love to see you. Then it's not your fault that, like, it, then, I mean, congratulations for being here. Like, had you not acted in a certain... still listening? Had you not acted in a certain way until now, it's not your fault. But what are you going to do about it after you listen to this video? What Uh is that? My ear pods. Maya Angelou says when you uh, do the best with what you know, and when you know better, do better. So that's why Sarit said if you didn't know this or understand this until now, it's not your fault. However, when you know better, do better. And if you don't, then it's your fault. Now, I had this image in my mind okay. of like somebody with no accountability and just always being reactionary to everything in their life. And imagine you're in a jail cell. I've never personally been in one uh but what i imagine is like what you see on tv where you're in this like square room with black bars with a locked door and you can't get out and there's like a little white bed and it's a shitty room with like a crappy toilet i don't even know anyways so you're in this cell and you are like all kind of elements are getting thrown at you like you've got water like like it's raining on you and then it's super windy and then it, is there a reason like you keep coming this no, way i don't know why it's happening <laughs> um <laughs> i'm very attractive you are uh, i'm magnetic if yes. you might say like this <laughs> anyways okay so <laughs> i'm trying to be balanced you're very attractive i'm trying to be balanced on the camera anyways so you're in this cell there's all these elements there's you know shit getting thrown at you um it's freezing cold in there one moment and then it's like burning hot in there and you're sweating and you can't get cool and you feel like you're um, getting heat stroke and then you know the next minute there's like hail and you have no control over any of this and it feels so chaotic. It feels like you can't do anything about any of it, but you are holding the key in your hand. Mm. And all you have to do is put the key in the door and let yourself the fuck out. Sometimes it is as simple as that imagery to just get yourself started because we're not here to just like rant at you <laughs> like this is our therapy right now yes it totally um, is i get but, i get what andy said okay hold on this is our this is our therapy right now however this is like also something that we know that a lot of people need to understand about themselves and what direction they can go in life to improve their life so hopefully you take this and you're like okay even if you're not like you know, in as chaotic of a situation that we've kind of described, even if it's a mo- to a mild degree, there's still something you can probably pull away from this video. There's somewhere I could ask myself in my life, where could I take more accountability? Where could I have more responsibility? And the truth is that we can all get better 
But if you find yourself often complaining about, you know, why things are not the way that you want them in your life and like nothing ever goes your way and, you know, you've got all these illnesses and you're always tired and your kids are annoying and like all this stuff in your life seems to like none of it goes right. You have to ask yourself, where are you responsible for that? Where can you take accountability for that? And when you say you're going to do something and it is difficult to do, how often do you follow through to completion? Because if, you know, many of the people in our community are really on a mission to be more confident in themselves, to have a higher self-esteem, to feel more energized and like they're not tired all the time, to feel like they've got a higher level of self-worth. And the only way that you can accomplish those things is to be accountable to yourself for the decisions that you make. The more you do that, the more confident you feel before your body even starts to change. The way that you get more confidence, the way that you feel better about yourself and your life and your self-esteem increases is by following through with the things you say you're going to do. You know how good it feels when you say you're going to eat a healthy meal when you know there's only going to be pizza around and you actually stick to that intention and you don't eat the pizza. Not that pizza is terrible and you can never have it, but if that was your intention and you stuck to it and you go to bed that night and then you wake up in the morning, you feel so fucking good about yourself because you're like, I did something that I said I was going to do. That's what gives you confidence, not a six pack. The six pack comes when you do that enough times, when you have accountability with yourself enough times, eventually your body just changes with you. The problem is, is that everybody wants their body to change, but nobody wants to change themselves. So it's like, so let's you're talk like, about, you're so like, let's okay, talk about, so hold on. Hold let's on. talk about solutions though. We've yes. talked about problem, problem, yes, problem. But listen, listen, this is therapy right now. So hold on. Let so you're like, okay, body, I need you to change. It's almost like two spouses that keep on fighting. It's like, he said, she said, he said, she said. I'm like, no, no. The problem why, it, it, if, if a couple keeps on running into the same issue over and over and over again, it's because people are not taking responsibility, they're not being disciplined, and there's no accountability. Simple as that. How you do one thing is how you do everything, right? So everybody's like, oh, you know, like, body, I need you to change. Meanwhile, you you talk down on yourself, literally fucking bully yourself. Meanwhile, you treat your body like a garbage truck and give yourself garbage. I would say that if you're watching this, then you're on your way to change that because you're actually consuming positive information. But instead of facing up to your emotions, you like mask them by doing something else, eating or drinking. Yes, and I'm like, is it any wonder? I'm like, dude, your body is a byproduct of everything that you've done until today. You want your body to look different? You want your body to have a, a six pack? You need to clean up your act. That's all it is. It's a byproduct of I've cleaned up my act, I've stayed disciplined, and I've done, I've, I've repeatedly done that over and over and over again. This is the magic pill. I just gave you the magic pill and people literally would, you know, like buy these pills, get these injections, like, uh, you know, do these ridiculous things. And I used to be one of these people because, you know, if you feel desperate, like you'll do anything. But I'm like, I just gave you a magic pill. But, but the magic pill is not sexy. It's so, not. So it's a hard, it's the hardest pill to swallow. Right. And that's what, and, and that's why people keep on looking for other things because they're like, oh, sounds nice, but let me try to find a shiny object. Well, there, it sound, you guys, the reason why you want the shiny object or the magic pill is because <laughs> taking the easy way is the complete opposite of accountability. Yeah. Taking, there is no easy way, by the way, because even when you take the easy way, you think is the easy way, it is actually harder than the hard way because you continue in your suffering. 
Because if you try to take the easy way, which doesn't exist, you continue to suffer the way that you have been, thinking that something's wrong with you and that you can't do anything right. But if you were to take the less sexy, oh, I've got to create discipline, there's no pill for that. Oh, I've got to have accountability, there's no pill for that. Oh, I've got to work on um, learning how to manage my emotions and work through my trauma and my shit. There's no pill for that. You have to do the work. There is no other way. You have to do the work. And if you are not willing or ready to do the work, then you are not ready to change. Period. Don't try. Usually I wouldn't tell somebody to not try, but you have to be willing to do the work. Stop thinking that when you hire a coach, you still know better. Man, sometimes we have people where they're like, hire us to coach them. And they're like, yeah, I'm ready. And then they go and do stuff they don't even tell us that they're doing because they know what we're going to say about it. And it's like, you, you coach yourself for free. You don't have to give us your money to, to do what you think is right. But if what you think is right has been working for you, then why would, are we here? would you be considering hiring anybody or doing it a different way? No. If you knew better, you wouldn't be in the situation that you were in. When we want to go somewhere we've never been, we hire somebody who's gone through it and who is there and who's been there and who has maintained that position, whatever it is, you know, for uh, a long time ago for us, it was our bodies. We got, we found coaches, we found people that were going to help us to improve ourselves. We hung out with them. We put ourselves around them. We, you know, invested in that time with those people, um, you know, with learning how to grow this community and serve way more people than we thought, you know, we'd ever be able to serve. We've got to get help from the people who have already served massive amounts of people. They know how to do that. If you haven't done something yet successfully and maintained it, then you don't know how to do it. Even if you think you know, so people are like, ah, yeah, I know what to do. I just need to do it. Then you don't know what to, then you do, maybe you know the what, but you don't know the how. Yeah, I know how, I've done it before. Yeah, okay, well, if you haven't maintained it, then do you really know how? Because if, if you knew how and you could how, you would not still be searching for it. So, um, I want to give some like actionable steps and like, okay, so you, so like, here's you what, ranted about all this. How do I get started? Okay. So I will tell you how you get started. You make a commitment. That's number one. What are we making a commitment to? Like, just let's give some examples to kind of like help, help them make, make a commitment to be open-minded. Listen, if you're going to take on our teachings, you, you make a commitment to be open-minded. If it's with someone else, that's totally fine. Now, I'm not sure if they will change your thinking. Um, but make a commitment to accountability no matter what. And if you know that you've lacked accountability, if you haven't been trustworthy with holding yourself accountable, then please don't tell yourself, yourself I will hold myself accountable because you're not a trustworthy person yet simple to yourself do you trust yourself right. is the only question that you have to answer is do i trust myself yeah. to do what i say i'm gonna do you know and don't take the easy way out sometimes i hear oh yeah i'm gonna have like my husband or my wife hold me accountable and then i would ask them well because you don't have to go out of your way for that yeah well well how has that been going for you well you know they're, they're really good with working out but how has that been going for you Here's, if it hasn't been going for you, what makes you think that it's going to work now? So here's what you're saying. You're saying if you've already tried it before and nothing got better in any way, don't try that thing again. Didn't work. If nothing got better in any way, because there are some times where you can try something and you make improvements, but like you didn't quite follow through all the way. That doesn't mean that that whatever it was that you tried was wrong. So let's say, you know, you ask your husband or your wife or whoever to, to hold you accountable and you did, you did 
you improved in a way that you maintained from that, but then there was still something missing and so you fell off. If you can approach that same scenario and something is gonna be different about that scenario, like you've got a clear game plan with that person, whereas like the time before there wasn't a clear game plan. Okay, great, try again, because there is an element that is different. That is what we're looking for in this. There has to be an element that is different. We have people do our raw transformation program uh, two or three or four times. We've had people do it five times, five times. And that is because, okay, why would you do something um, again and again and again is if there was an element that was different for you the next time you tried it, but there has to be something different about it. Okay. So that's the thing is like, whatever your accountability your person is that you're going to or your people or whatever by the way you can just go to our facebook group just go to our public facebook group and get accountability if you want accountability from us or you want to coach with somebody on our team um we'll put a link in the description where you can actually like maybe book a call with somebody like one of our enrollment specialists and see like what things we offer that that's going to be helpful for you so listen the other thing that you have to understand is that there is a consequence to everything that you do and everything that you don't do. And, you know, for anybody who has been living their life up till now, I believe that if you're still watching this, it's because you're ready. You know, so... Or you're a diehard so, fan. So I want to prepare you. And if you're a, a diehard fan, you're like, yes, yes, I know. Tell me. Then put All it of in my the comments. co-workers... I have been telling me this thing and I've been telling them about it for so long. Then put it in the comments because people need your inspiration. They need yes. to see that you struggled somewhere in your life that's same as them because nobody believes us because they think we just woke up like this. And so tell them in the comments. We love you. There's a consequence for everything that you do or don't do. So, you know, you decide to not wake up on time so that you can fit in your workout oh okay like what's what's the worst that's gonna happen i'm gonna skip a workout but what decision are you gonna make later that day because you've quit on yourself how you do one thing is how you do everything and sometimes you guys all that it takes is one tiny decision to create a chain reaction. This is how people, oh, I was so good until I fell off. Yeah, what happened? You made one justification. You made one decision that led to a bigger consequence. Having a, people in our industry like to call it cheat meal. We like to call it having a treat. Like an intentional Ain't treat. nothing wrong with having a treat. But listen, if, you're, if you do not know how to manage yourself well, well enough yet, that one cheat can lead to a snowball effect of you wanting to eat like garbage for an entire week. So you have to take responsibility and ask yourself, well, is this one action worth the consequence, right? And a lot of times when people want to back out of some kind of commitment, whatever it is, it's because they're feeling uncomfortable for some reason we don't know what it is and they're seeking back their comfort well it's different for everyone we could know what it is but each person has their own reason but you getting your temporary comfort back is actually going to cost you so much more in the long run this and that is why you know like the older you get the less people you see thriving. Why, why do most people view like the 60s and up to be like death, sickness, obesity? It's because time compounds everything. If you do the right shit, by the time you're 60, you're living your best life. And you're I, just I, I need to up. say this though, if you are in your 50s or 60s, like it is still not too late the other it's another big mistake is thinking like oh it's too late for me no no no, no. go on google and look up people in their uh, 60s and 70s who started their fitness journey in their 60s or whatever and where are they now like you'll find inspirational stories it's possible but i i, I just want to 
I, I want to wrap this up and, and, and make sure that you have whatever, something that you can actually do. So the things you said, make a commitment. Okay. But it's like very broad. Okay. So then we said, find some other outside source of accountability other than yourself, somebody who is trustworthy, somebody who's not going to sugarcoat things for you, somebody who's going to tell you when your shit stinks and when you need to get your head out of your ass. That's the type of accountability that you need if you're serious. Um, and if you're not serious, then I don't know why you would still be watching. Even if you are a disciplined person, because what are you though? I'm disciplined, but we have someone hold us accountable. No. What? If you're truly disciplined, you are not in the place that we are describing right now. Oh, of course not. So but yes, I'm yes. Everybody needs accountability. Hold on. Okay. Let me keep going. Commitment, accountability from an outside source. Um, you also need a game plan for when shit hits the fan. What are you going to do? What are you going to do when things get hard? Figure that out before things get hard. What is my way around this adversity or this situation that was unexpected? How can I best be prepared to overcome something like that? Because I'll tell you when you, this why, you know, one of the reasons why Sarit and I take ourselves through really difficult workouts sometimes is not because it's really fun and we love it. It's because when you take yourself through hard shit on purpose, when life's hard shit happens to you outside of your uh, will, you can handle it that much better. So making the commitment, getting an outside source of accountability, planning ahead for shit storms, and intentionally putting yourself through discomfort so that when it happens unexpected, you're better at dealing with it. Solid. I'm finished. Solid. If you happen to actually get to this video, can you just <laughs> if give you've us made a, it this far, can you give us a thumbs up emoji? Like I would be curious to know because I'll tell you this video is super polarizing, and I will also tell you this is how you know that this shit is real because we do not care about being liked. What we care about is helping you to win, which means that. Criticism is just going to happen. But here, I want to I wanna say this too, though. It, it is with so much compassion we deliver this. Yes. Because we really do believe in people because we have struggled in our own lives. We have been depressed. We have had major anxiety. We have wondered why the heck we're even here and what our purpose is in life. And are we just taking up space and wasting people's time and being an inconvenience to people and not being worthy and being overweight and struggling with disordered eating patterns and yo-yo dieting and wondering if that was going to be our life forever. We've struggled with it and we know what that is like and if it means we need to bring some honest truth to help people wake up and snap out of it then we risk a little bit of uh, a, a small group of people who are not ready to hear it to dislike us until they realize shit they were right and really what I was not liking in that moment was the fact that they were right about me and it was very uncomfortable and so, you know, we, we deliver truth and we do our best to make it compassionate and understanding of the fact that, hey, we've been there and we get it. But this is also why we deliver the way that we do, because it's time to wake up and be your best self, because we want you to be your best self, because we know that you have the capabilities of being your best self. You are made of the same shit we are. So if we can do it. There is no reason why you can't. So get the fuck out there and go make some shit happen. That's right. Oh, and also subscribe to our channel and like this video and send it to so somebody. That more and send it to somebody else who needs to hear it. That's it, guys. Hope you have a blessed day and go make some change so that you can create a life that you are excited to wake up for. Mwah. Be great.